If you've ever thought of quilting your own projects but just don't know where to start, I have the perfect first steps for you. I've put together a PDF guide. I call it Three Steps Toward Freehand Freedom. These are the baby steps, but they can help you move past your overwhelm and show you that yes indeed, freehand quilting can be learned. So if you'd like to snag this PDF, there's a link in the show notes, or if you're an Instagram user, just message me three steps. That's the number three, S-T-E-P-S, and I'll send you that link. Let today be the day you get started. Well, one thing I discovered with quilting, there's no rules. You know, I always thought I had to follow a pattern exactly and, you know, but there really are no rules. And to change something, it's not like somebody's going to come arrest you for it, you know, so. Hello and welcome to Measure Twice, Cut Once, the podcast where we hear quilters and other crafters' stories and draw encouragement and even life lessons from them. I'm your host, Susan Smith, coming to you from my quilting studio, Stitched by Susan. This is where my long arm, Lucy, and I spend lots of hours doing freehand, edge-to-edge quilting. If you're not a quilter and those terms mean nothing to you, it's basically doodling on a quilt top with a 50-pound pencil with needle and thread attached at high speed. My philosophy is there's nothing as warm and comforting as a handmade quilt, and so my mission is to get as many out in the world as possible. So I quilt for people, and I teach others to find freedom and joy in quilting for themselves. There are so many quilt makers and just as many stories. Quilting has been a bridge between generations. It has soothed loneliness and chronic pain, and it's been a beautiful expression of art and creativity that spans countries and cultures. Joining me today to tell us her story is Mary Harlow. Today's Pins and Needles is brought to you by The Will and Dave Show. Hi, I'm the Will half of The Will and Dave Show, a short little podcast that Myself and the eponymous Dave like to record talking about the things that really matter to us, whether that's social, political, or pop culture. Usually we don't see eye to eye, but more often than not, we can find some common ground in there somewhere. And now, back to pins and needles with a quick tip for all you sharp quilters out there. I want to tell you about a great tool that I've been using today. It's by Soline. And it's an eraser. And more specifically, it's an eraser for any type of air or water erasable markers. And this eraser is shaped like a pen. You hold it like a pen. But the central part of it is a tiny reservoir for water. And the tip of it is kind of like a felt pen, but just white, of course. So what happens is that water keeps the felt always moist. And you're able to erase your markings in very small areas. So if you've inadvertently you know, made a mark where you don't want it to be, you don't have to spritz it with water to remove it. You can just do it very daintily and very exactly with this little pen. Game changer. If you're interested in supporting this podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash stitched by Susan, where for the price of one delicious coffee, you're able to make a one-time contribution. This helps me keep batteries in stock for my microphone and enables me to keep bringing you these weekly episodes. Thank you so much for your support and maybe take a moment now to refill your cup, settle back and enjoy today's interview. Joining me today to tell us her story is Mary Harlow. Now, Mary and I have been friends for a number of years, and it was quilting that brought us together, but there are many other things that keep us together and have made us great friends. Mary has lots of wit and wisdom. She lives her life with grace and a lot of grit and truly is just an encouragement to all who know her. So take a moment to refill your beverage, whatever you're drinking, and sit back and enjoy the show. So my friend Mary Harlow is in the studio with me this morning, and Mary has some really great stories to tell because quilting was not her first craft. She's a very crafty lady. But how did you fall into quilting, Mary? Well, it was probably in about 2003. I had just moved to Spokane, Washington, Um, and my letter from my sister, and she sent me a pattern for... um, 
a quilt that she was making. Actually, she sent me just a piece because she was taking a class um, on the um, different state stars. That was one of those classes that if you finish one project, then the next class didn't cost you anything. And she said, um, I think you and Kathy and Judy and I, these are my sisters, um, should all make this quilt together. Well, I didn't know what she was talking about. I opened the, the pattern and the cutting instructions were foreign. And since I'm a um, garment maker, I, this none of us made sense. And I said, well, I'm not sure I can do that. And she said, well, I can help you with it. And I said, well, okay. And then along with this, she sent me a pattern for something to be paper piece. So then I was really in the dark. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, I went to visit our sister Kathy, who lives in Missoula, and I asked with a little bit. And she said, sure. So we went shopping for fabric and bought what I thought I needed and um, came home and tried to figure out these instructions again and realized that, that even the cutting instructions were just written in foreign language. And so I really didn't think I could do this. So anyway, um, Kathy invited me over and, and Judy, our sister Judy, to come over and just have a sew day with her or sew weekend, which we did. And we got there and our sister Betty was there who lives in Minneapolis. So that's how I started. Um, made my first quilt. It probably full of lots of mistakes. And uh, anyway, I got that done and I thought, well, that's kind of fun. So I tried a couple other things that worked out. I made a quilt for my daughter using uh, freezer paper and I'm not sure that I even did the directions right, but I put together and it now is absolutely worn thin because she loves it. So I kind of got into the spirit of this and um, the next thing I knew, my sister and I, Kathy and I, were going to a quilt show. And so as we looked through there, first of all, I was kind of overwhelmed by a quilt show because there was so much to see and um, just so much color. I was kind of almost had an overwhelming feeling that I couldn't, couldn't stay there. But I stuck it out and I kind of looked around to see what kept drawing me back. And I realized that I was drawn to anything with applique on it. I really liked old fabrics. Um, so that's kind of where I started this. Also, in this journey, I realized that I just didn't have the confidence, I guess, to pick out my own fabric. So when I first started quilting, I did a lot of, of kit work. And... Um, made some lovely quilts. My sister Kathy has a grace frame and she would just put her regular sewing machine on there to do some simple quilting. So I used that for a bit. Well, then this um, kind of morphed into me getting my own long arm <laughs> so I could quilt my own quilts. And um, so I just kept plugging away with that. I did quilting on my long arm and actually I got okay at it, but as I got into this applique and piecing and everything, I ended up discovering quilting. So Wait. you're just backing up a, a hair in your story. You did a lot of garment sewing though before you came to quilting. So you knew fabric, you knew your way around in fabric and you created so many things. I know you've told me stories of when your children were small and costumes and doll clothes and all those sorts of things that you made for them. Tell us a wee bit about that. Oh, back in the day, um, I actually am 4-H trained. When I was 10, well actually before that, I started sewing when I was about 8 I had a Jenny doll that um, I decided I needed to make clothes for her. So I just took some fabric and a thread and stitched some up and didn't do too badly with that. And about the same time, my mother taught me how to knit. So between the two, I had those two little crafts going. And then I uh, entered 4-H, which uh, you have to be 10 to do that. So that's where I started my garment making. And 
for anybody that, that is a so 4-H sower, they know that you are taught to do everything exactly, mm -hmm. which really lent itself to my quilting. And um, I even found that when I was sewing, I really liked detail in the patterns. I used Vogue patterns a lot because they had lots of pieces and lots of detail. And um, I just liked that. Added some smocking to some things. And um, so I think I've always kind of just really, really liked detail, fine work. Um, I never mind putting a hem into a dress, and I really enjoyed the process. So I guess that kind of lent itself to the quilting and how I kind of morphed into this style that I now have. Um, because I like the detail, so I like handwork, um, I don't know if anybody knows the quilt pattern. It's called... Um, my favorite things. It's it's put together by a gal in Australia. Let's see. I'll look it up here. Um, uh, it's by Annie Downs. Anyways, darling, darling quilt. It's, it's all hand applique, and then it's put together with little tiny squares. And I realized when I was putting this together that there was no way I was going to try to sew individual one and a half inch squares together in order to make the the sashing on this. So it ended up being a, a hand quilt. I mean, I, I put the piece, pieces together by hand. And then I sewed the entire thing together by hand. And then I thought, well, if I've done this all by hand, I certainly can't add a machine to it. So then I quilted the whole thing by hand. And um, there's a one of the blocks has best friends and has two girls hugging and I decided the girl needed a pearl necklace. So I put a pearl necklace on her and the first thing I know this had taken on a life of its own so I have beaded the entire thing with different uh, embellishments and so um, that was probably my introduction to stepping out of the box a little bit, adding some detail to the quilts and um, kind of putting my own spin on things which um, I don't always think of myself being able to do that, but I guess I can. And um, anyway, so that's kind of how I have come full circle into making quilts and doing a lot of handwork. So tell me, has your, you mentioned earlier, you know, your change in taste and that early on you did kits and someone else kind of chose the fabrics. Mm -hmm. Give us kind of a sense of how your taste evolved, even in terms of colors and styles of fabric that you like and like to work with. Okay, well, I think that, well, it goes back to a lot of things. First of all, it go, kind of goes back to quilting with other quilters. Um, goes back to road trips. Um, I think you were with me, Susan, the day we went out to Buggy Barn, which originally was out outside of Spokane. We went in there and I thought, Ooh, everything's just kind of dark in here. I wasn't sure I liked that. Well, she sewed a lot of primitive fabrics. And um, over time, for some reason, that has kind of grown on me. And so then I actually bought a couple of quilts or kits from her. And one of them uh, was a quit quilt doing wool work. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh. I thought I'd never do wool work, but here I got stuck with doing wool work. And of course, a lot of that is hand work and it, it was just delightful. And it's put together with like um, shirting, um, plaid shirting and um, serge. And it's a very primitive quilt. Not only is there a lot of richness and color in those fabrics, but there's texture which really yes. plays up the wool and the embellishments that you love to do. Yes. I've seen all these quilts of Mary's, by the way, for our listeners, <laughs> and they are truly wonderful. And yeah. I have another story to tell on Mary. So it's kind of all Mary's fault that I've become a machine quilter because when I first met Mary, quilting is what kind of introduced us to each other. And Mary invited me to her home to quilt a baby quilt on her long arm. And so one afternoon I went over there and did this one little quilt and before that afternoon was over, I knew what I wanted to do, basically, with the rest of my life. So the rest is history. I went and got my own long arm, and I've been doing that ever since. So, yeah, Mary and I cheer each other on that way. You know, the minute you started doing that, Susan, I knew you had a knack. Just 
you just got it, you know, and I could see your artistic. Yeah, it's so interesting. Part. Yeah. Go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to say, it's kind of fun to have that part of our history together. It is. And it's fascinating to hear you make the comment that you didn't think that you're a creative person, but you see it coming out in the embellishments that you love to do in quilts. And I feel the same way. I had never in my life felt like an artist until I had needle and thread and fabric as my medium and and away I went. Um, Well, one thing I discovered with quilting, there's no rules. So... um, you know, I always thought I had to follow a pattern exactly and, you know, but there really are no rules. And to change something, it's not like somebody's going to come arrest you for it, you know. So um, I have to say, backing up a little bit on my story, um, when I first started this quilting with my sister, my sisters, um, my very first quilt that I kind of ventured out in. And and actually at that time, I did go beyond the pattern because it was a medallion quilt and I had to make it bigger. I wanted to fit on my bed. So I ended up incorporating prairie points and um, different methods. And then I actually quilted this on my girlfriend's long arm as my very first project. And I look back on that and actually it's not too bad. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up making or naming that quilt um, New Beginnings because about that time my life fell apart. Um, I walked away from kind of an abusive relationship after 33 years and five kids and um, I found out that it was really good therapy. So I've been sewing ever since. Didn't do so much while I was working, but since I'm retired, I that's kind of my number one thing. I absolutely love that you call it New Beginnings, and truly that's kind of what I want this podcast to be all about, is every, every quilt maker has a story and has a way that working with fabric has healed or has helped them to grow or to cope, and I know and love your story. New Beginnings. Yeah, that was on my bed for a long time. I have advanced from that, however. A couple years ago, I knew I was going to have shoulder surgery, and I figured out that I could hand sew while I was laid up in a sling. So I prepped all my work first, and I made um, a Dresden plate quilt for my bed completely by hand. And, of course, it had to be hand quilted. So um, that was kind of a fun project, and I had to you know, paint my room and stuff to go with it. So that's kind of how you do things. Everything seems to take on a life of its own. Isn't that the truth? We redecorate our houses around our quilts. Yeah. That's so great. And of course, I've seen that quilt too. And it is a thing of beauty. It's very, has quite a bit of navy in it, which is just so striking um, of a quilt. Well, that's really planning ahead, Mary, to get all your prep done so that you could be ready, set, go, and still be turning out quilts while you're laid up. That's fantastic. Yeah, I got quite a bit done. I have one more really fun story that was just happening. This time I'm with my sister Betty. I had gone to um, Minneapolis to visit her, and we were going to a quilt retreat in... um, Wisconsin. Anyway, on our way, we were in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and this was in 2012. We had stopped for lunch in this um, little restaurant. We had to go to the counter and order your own restaurant. I mean, your own food, and then they brought it to you. Anyway, we were sitting together. It was my sister and myself and her friend, and we were sitting at a table by the window for four people. And my sister was facing me and she said, wonder what's going on. They just blocked off that intersection. And within 30 seconds, the presidential limousines had all pulled up in front of that restaurant and in came Joe Biden. And at the time he was uh, campaigning for Obama's second term. And so he was just, I think he was you know, making the rounds. Anyway, we just kind of watched, sat there and watched. Everybody was clamoring around him and taking pictures, and we just kind of sat and watched. And pretty soon he came over and pulled out the single chair that was left at our table and sat down and spent about 15 minutes visiting. It was really great. 
And I had just bought a pattern for a quilt. Um, and I thought, I've got to have a, an autograph. So I pulled out the one sheet out of my new pattern that didn't have something on the back of it that I wouldn't have to cut up. And so I have his signature. And, um, and he said, Mary, 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 keep the faith. He said, see you in Washington. And so he apparently Washington was his next stop. So anyway, little did I know that he was going to be our president someday. And um, <laughs> just kind of a fun connection with quilting, how things just happen. That's, that is so great. I love that story. Well, Mary, thank you so much for joining me today. As always, it is such a pleasure to visit with you. Thank you, Susan. It find. was fun. And thank you. For information on classes I offer or quilting services, please see my website, stitchedbysusan.com. If you're a long-arm quilter and looking for freehand tips, take advantage of the live and unscripted episodes on my Facebook page, Stitched by Susan. Replays are also available on my YouTube channel also stitched by Susan. And if pictures are your preference, check out my links. All these direct links can be found in the show notes below. So until next time, may your sorrows be patched and your joys be quilted.